Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Communication is key. Two people can be in the same relationship and yet see it in two different ways. Today on our space, we learn that we must communicate even if it's uncomfortable or uneasy. First up, some things are better left unopened. As I promised, the whole story. I was married for two years at the time. Wife is a serious TikTok junkie, sends me at least 20 a day. We are both in our early 20s. Start sending ones about open marriages and also some podcasts. A few long talks about how we are young and should try this before we are old and have kids. After a few months of pushing and pushing, I give in and we set up some boundaries. No unprotected sex. Two, nothing in our house and no overnight stays. Three, if sex occurs with someone else, no details, no touching each other for 30 days, and a doctor's visit and cleared before any intimacy between us. We open our marriage. She starts going on dates on Friday nights. I work anyways. I get home normally around 10 p.m. For the first year, it was kind of fun. She goes out on a date. By the time I get home, she is already home or getting home at the same time. She tells me what they did on the date and she jumps me. They are just dates, no sex or intimacy. During this first year, I myself go on three dates. Each one goes the exact same way. They find out I am married and it is not what they are looking for. It was nice meeting you. After three dates, I quit. Then, one Friday night, she doesn't get home till like 3 a.m. Comes in, makes a joke about being too sore and tired for anything, sees some hickey marks on her chest and thighs. Not going to lie, was hurt and upset by this. Monday or Tuesday, I don't remember, she tries to initiate with me and I remind her of rule number three. She gives me the, are you serious, 30 days and a doctor's visit? I said, yes, deadly serious. This becomes a pattern for us. She goes out with her bad boy on Friday nights, has her fun, then spends the rest of the week trying to get me to change rule number three. To me, feels like she put me on a shelf. I start avoiding her, working more out of the house, even if just out walking. Start becoming a lot more physically active. Start losing some weight. She is full in a fog of new relationship energy and doesn't notice and thinks I am out doing my own thing. Five months of being on a shelf. I'm not seeing a reason to remain in this marriage. I was selling my happiness so she could be happy, and I was running out of things to sell. Up to this point, she has not broken any boundaries, and every time I bring up maybe she should step back from him, I am overreacting and blowing this way out of proportion. It's just some fun one night a week. Our fourth wedding anniversary day arrives, and I take the day off of work, make her dinner, and clean the house. She gets home from work at four, hops in the shower, gets dressed up, tells me she's going to a bar to see a local band and not to wait up. She completely forgot about our anniversary. I am destroyed. I wake up Saturday morning at 9 a.m. and she never came home. Boundary number two broken. I send her one simple text. You have broken our boundary of no sleeping over. I am done. At 11.30, she starts calling, telling me she just closed her eyes for a second and passed out. It was an accident. I'm so sorry. It will never happen again. My unwillingness to even talk about it causes her to wake up out of her fog some. She ends up coming to my work just before we open and makes a scene in front of the whole staff and the owners. I'm finally able to calm her down enough and she leaves, I promised on Sunday, we can discuss it. I get home from work Saturday night and she once again tries to have sex with me and again tell her rule number three. She then tells me that she will no longer be seeing him and wants to close the marriage and work on reconnecting with me. Seems she freaked out when she woke up there, got my texts and he made fun of her and she realized how much of an a-hole he was. She tries every day to be intimate with me and fails badly. At this point, I have no need or want or desire for her. She is a roommate. Barely the 30 days goes by, she goes to the doctor and gets checked out. She is clean of diseases, but is pregnant. I'm not sure where her mind was with this, but she comes home excited and tells me we are pregnant. I tell her, good, I hope you two will be happy together. Looks at me confused for a few minutes and starts crying. She, a few days later, sends him a text telling him. His response is, Wow, sucks to be you. Might want to pass it off as your husband's. Laters. I file for divorce soon after. She starts doing anything and everything to change my mind about the divorce. Make promises, begs, pleads. Offers everything under the sun asking for a chance to fix us. I am polite and nice about it, but not having any of it. I'm stuck living with her for a while until our lease is up. We fall into a new pattern. She tries to be intimate with me. I turn her down. She gets upset. I go for a run. My resentment of her is growing just like her baby bump. Three weeks ago, she comes in my room to talk. 
She brought home pizza for dinner. Starts with how being pregnant she is, super horny all the time, and tries yet again to have sex with me. I, at this point, am running out of politeness. Tell her sorry, I am not into fat chicks. Maybe hit Tinder, sure, someone on there would be down for it. She leaves the room crying. Also, we had our first divorce hearing after the judge slapped six weeks of marriage counseling on us court ordered. We go two sessions. Kinda a meet and greet thing, talk to us separately to get our stories, I guess. I just want this over so we can move on with our lives. Last Sunday was my birthday. On that Friday before it, she asked me to spend my birthday with her to celebrate it. I decline her invitation. She keeps pushing the subject and I snap. I tell her I don't waste special occasions on her anymore. The last one was our fourth anniversary in which she went out to get knocked up by some pothead loser. I leave her crying in the kitchen, head to work, told her I would see her on Monday for our court ordered waste of time. Monday morning, I'm at marriage counseling and she never shows. I call her, nothing. Call her friends, nothing. Call her parents. She got arrested Sunday morning for DUI and reckless endangerment and they are on the way. I offer our house for them to stay at. I have a couch at a friend's house. My lawyer goes to the judge and expedites things. My divorce finalized this past Friday. Yesterday, I helped them pack some of her stuff and today, going to help them load a U-Haul they rented. She gets released tomorrow and they are taking her back home with them. She wants to see me, but I feel that will just be worse for the both of us. We both need to move on. First response from GH6ST. That 30 day rule likely saved you from being stuck to her for another 18 years. I guarantee you she would have tried to pass the baby off as yours if the two of you were having sex at the time. Good luck on your future. Joma's witness says, I'm really glad you stood up for yourself, my guy. Keep it going. You'll find someone who only wants you. Levantus adds in next. The funny thing is, you stood by the rules and gave her every chance to improve. And she broke every single one of them. Number three, she tried consistently to break, showing a complete disrespect. Imagine that. She had the entire thing handed to her exactly as she wanted it, and it wasn't enough. And then she thought you would still stay after she broke every rule. But you didn't. And you're a dang hero for that. I really saw this story going another way, but this was the best outcome. You got rid of a miserable person who tried to take advantage of you every single step of the way. Corky Macaroon 7999 chimes in. Do not sign the birth certificate and ask your lawyer as to how to get out of not paying child support. You would need to show DNA tests to show that you are not the father and do not proclaim the kid as your own otherwise courts might compel you to pay child support. Please check with your lawyer regarding kids born with another father during the marriage. The OP replies, lawyer said I am free and clear, just super emotional today, been crying, not sure for what, just... The concept of open marriage, or any open relationship, whether wedding rings are involved or not, runs counter to everything we've been taught about romantic commitment, and that's exactly why it fascinates so many of us. An open marriage can be healthy, but it won't likely save a relationship that's in trouble. Certainly, an open relationship cannot save a marriage. In fact, if there are existing conflicts, power struggles, and other issues in a relationship, when you open up a monogamous relationship, those will become magnified times 10. Working to achieve excellent communication is required before you both embark on something like this. Talking is key in a relationship. I'm sorry that your marriage had to end this way, OP. She definitely didn't fully appreciate what she had until it was too late. What are your thoughts on open relationships? Meanwhile, our next OP wants off this roller coaster. He's already sleeping over at her house. My soon to be ex-husband blindsided me and our kids one month ago today. It went like this. Day one, doesn't have the same feelings as before and needs some space. Day two, has a friend he's been talking to at work and kissed. Day three, loves me and wants to be with me and doesn't know how he got to this point. Wants to repair our marriage and hopes to God I can forgive him. Day four, changes his mind and tells me he made a mistake. He wants out and wants a divorce. Every day since then has been a roller coaster. My emotions have run from anguish to rage and everything in between. There were no signs he was unhappy with me. He didn't talk to one soul amongst our friends, his friends, his family, about how he was feeling. He just talked to her. We were together in every sense of the word up until the day before he told me all this crap. I freaking hate her with every fiber of my being, and I'm coming close to hating him just as much. The only thing that stops me from hating him that much are the children we share. They're so disillusioned with him and don't know what to say or think when they're around him. They started counseling last week. 
I'm not in counseling because we can't afford it, but luckily I have a solid support group to turn to. How do people do things like this and walk around freely as if they're good people? How do people live with themselves knowing they've caused hurt that can't even be measured? I took my kids for a drive last evening and he called while we were out to say goodnight to them. He's been staying with his mother. Said he was going to bed, etc. They said goodnight and then I said I'd take them to get a treat. It's summer, why not? After we got the treat, I said let's go leave a silly note on dad's truck for him to find in the morning. They've been having a lot of heartache and pain over this and I suggested the note to maybe start more dialogue with the three of them. They used to leave notes for him on his coffee mug or his lunchbox and they liked the idea and got a napkin and pen trying to figure out what to write. Well, as you can guess, we roll by his mother's house and his truck isn't there. To say that I wanted to shrivel into a ball of shame is an understatement. Now my kids have first-hand evidence of his lying and it's all because I wanted to help them bridge a gap. I truly believed he would have been there because in the last four days, he said some things to me that made me pause and wonder if he was starting to realize what he was doing was wrong. And maybe, just maybe, we could actually rebuild our marriage. I was dead wrong. I texted him and told him to call me ASAP, and when he called me back, I asked him why his truck wasn't at his mom's. I told him why we drove by. He told me he was on a job downtown. He does work nights every so often. I laughed and said, oh, on a job, huh? You just told me you were going to bed. We hung up and I barely slept. I spoke to him again just a bit ago and asked him why he just couldn't tell me the dang truth about where he was last night. Why can't he just kill the dream I have completely so I can move the hell on? All he would tell me was that it was inappropriate and that I already know the answer. He still couldn't just say it outright. The effing coward? Yes, I spent the night at her place. She's dang near 10 years older than me, has red hair, which he has told me for years that he is not attracted to. He's told me several things about her personal life. She's a grandmother and a divorcee who was left by her husband for another woman herself, but refuses to tell me her name as if knowing her name is going to make it any less painful. She works with him, of course. This old freaking C word knew dang well he was married and still allowed something to happen between them. She is the lowest of the low, especially since she knows what it's like to be hurt like this. And my husband isn't much farther up the rung of low as crap human beings. And now I'm going to have to fake it for my kids' sakes. Continue to make sure that they don't hear me talk bad about him and don't turn them against him. God. That ticks me off so much. He gets exactly what he wants and I'm the one who has to be civil? Just take it on the chin while he cozies up to his rebound, the one he has had in the wings. We've been together for 21 years and married for nearly 15 of those and have built an entire life and he wants to be friends after doing this? Is he on crack? I'm calling my lawyer as soon as her office opens up. I'm fast tracking this to go through because I can't stand to see or talk to him. My plan is to go no contact. I have no interest in having any sort of relationship with him. I can be cordial and all that crap, but I'm not sharing holidays, which he actually thinks can happen, or even a room with him unless I absolutely have to. Jesus H, how am I not supposed to think that I've wasted my life with this man? I got two amazing children out of our relationship and they're the only things that have kept me going. I guess that's what we were meant to be together for, the kids. I'm grateful for them and I can only hope that I don't lose my crap along the way. New Arrival 9860 has our first comment. You don't have to be friends to be successful co-parents as long as you can be cordial and civil when discussing the children and make choices that are in the children's best interest. You can cut them out of the rest of your universe. The OP replies, and that's what I'm going to have to do. Seeing him and talking to him is beyond painful. Knowing that she is running her hands through his hair, she gets to snuggle with him and kiss him and feel his touch, it makes me sick to my stomach. The Wise Man 4 adds, this is heartbreaking to read. I know all of your pain. Everybody here does. The best thing to do is not to engage at all with him. They panic and squirm and they realize we stop pining. Ignore anything else that doesn't have to do with the kids. Don't let him talk to you about anything. These people are so cruel. F him. You do not have to be friends with him. Any friends who are downplaying this or forcing you to get over it, demote them to acquaintance and then make better friends. Be the responsible parent for your kids. Guy Winch did a TED talk. I loved following that advice. Make the list he suggests and become best friends with that list. Then get the Leave a Cheater audiobook and listen to it on repeat. Do not go to him for comfort. You and your kids are on your way to a more peaceful life, which is the dumbest crap to read when you feel as terrible as you do right now, but I promise, no contact in Greyrock. You'll start to realize that without them in your head, you start to grow. 
create really good memories with yourself and with your kids right now. I went to Disneyland twice, the zoo, a concert, and several other things in the first two months of finding out about my husband's affair. Creating those memories helps your brain understand that your life will be great without him one day. Also, don't protect his reputation. Tell people what he's done. They'll validate you that it is the sickest, grossest, crustiest thing somebody can do to somebody else. Reach out on here, always, if you need to. Tersher78 adds, Now is an excellent time to implement the 180 and begin gray rocking. No more in-person conversations. Push it all to text while working towards getting a co-parenting app. You have to focus on your own healing. He is incapable of giving that to you. Find emotional outlets that don't involve talking to him. Like working out, yoga, journaling, or some other hobby. Read Leave a Cheater Gain a Life, Cheating in a Nutshell, and The Body Keeps the Score. The goal is to create the emotional distance you need to begin to heal. The OP replies back, Thank you to everyone who comments and offers support and advice. It is all appreciated. What hurts my heart the most are two things. One, my kids have now seen firsthand that he's a liar, and two, I mean so little to him. He says differently that he cares a lot for me and wants to do what's right and take care of me and the kids. He's full of crap. He's only saying that to absolve him of the guilt of what he is doing. He knows it is wrong. He knows it. I was originally going to see him in person today, but I have decided to go full no contact. I'm going out today to buy my kids their own phones. We've been avoiding that for years, but now it has to be done. And we'll be calling my lawyer shortly to inform her that every ounce of communication will be done via her. I want to schedule a meeting with him in her office to discuss custody, as I need someone whom is on my side right there with me. You know what he said to me as he was packing a bag for himself the day that he left? I thought I could do both, Finn. I thought I could handle both, but I can't. Meaning, he was willing to be and act like my husband and also have the side pieces. He was willing to put me at risk like that. But I guess he just couldn't go through with that, so he left. I'm sorry, OP. Clearly your ex is extremely unhappy with himself and he had to ruin something so beautiful. It honestly sounds like he has completely lost himself and has no idea what he wants, who he is, and what to do. It's extremely unfair to you and your girls. You are absolutely trying and doing the best that you can. I'm so proud of you. I wish people were able to be more honest with themselves and their partners. It's extremely frustrating dealing with people like this, especially partners. They look completely unrecognizable to not only you, but themselves. Communicating with you about how he was feeling could have completely changed the outcome of this marriage. Perhaps the two of you could have worked something out. Unfortunately, his actions mean that his kids have to see him in this new light. And you know what? That's not on you. That's on him. Be honest with him about how his actions affect his children, as the children are the most important things right now. You are so loved, OP. You will find peace and happiness again. Give OP your words of encouragement in the comments below. And thank you again for joining us today on Our Space. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, please let us know what you thought of today's content. Until next time.